called I called Dennis. I says, Dennis, go and get me 20 fags first and foremost because everyone smoked mine here. And secondly, how would you like 15 alcoholics? He went, send them down. So <laughs> I did. I got, got me 20, 20 fags, one pint. So I got to go, Dennis. I got to go Italy. I can't be hanging out here. So yeah, yeah. I left him there. We just arranged a sesh there now for uh, afternoon on the roof, the 21st of July. Can you bring your mate? Oh, he's got an unofficial, I mean, an unofficial roof terrace. Now get on this. It's like you have to go five flights of stairs through a kitchen and hop out of a window. And then you're in this Hawaiian paradise. He's got AstroTurf down, full bar, no kegs, the whole lot. So, yeah, I've arranged for 10, 15 hoodlings. When's this up? Sunday, 21st July, 4 till 7, invite only. Ooh. <clears throat> sounds like good old crack that will. Sounds, 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 like, sounds like a bit of a session. Well, you, you know, you know the gang, don't you? I do indeed. Yeah, Andy and the, Peter and the Bob and the the Hulos and Dave Lally and the boys. Yeah, I mean the, the, only, the only problem is when you want to go to the bathroom, you have to go out a window and down the. Stairs. Wouldn't have been the first time, Paul. Wouldn't have been the first time, mate. I think I think I think I got I think I was up there once and I, I said to him, I "Listen, mate, I can't even run up down these fucking stairs, helping out windows." <laughs> Would you not get a Would you not get a portaloo? What? Would you, would you not get a portaloo? How would you empty a portaloo on the roof? That's his fucking problem. Get a chopper in. <laughs> I mean, how did he get a bar up there? Yeah, good point. It's not as if he sent donkeys up the stairs, is it? I mean, he must have got it somehow. How long did it take to get from the roof to the toilet? Do you have to go all the way down to the bottom of the pub? Um. The last, he had some special women's toilet that he wouldn't let me use because you can't use that. That's for the staff. Did he have a bucket? Yeah, that's for the staff. And he sent me around five flights of staff. And I just had, I said, listen. Pint glass, let's go. You crap on. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll just go to the bar and you carry on your own. You can't be going diving in that. So yeah, he wants me to bring the trads up and we just have a, annoy the neighbours. Oh yeah, I'd say, I'd say they'd be well. They'll either be annoyed or bopping away. No, I think oh. there'll be. A, I think the, he'll he'll have a, his usual hissy fit. God, the neighbours are coming down and go downstairs now and go inside and make a racket. So yeah, he'll do all that stuff and yeah, we, we, we should be fun. That's great, sir. Promise the high get in when it comes to playing music. But every time a band gets started, he's like, "It's too late, it's too late, get off the stage, too late." It's like, oh, geez, we just warmed up. I know. I, I have my annual thing now. I'm going to start at four o'clock on the Saturday, so therefore, yeah. technically, he should be finished by midnight. So there's eight hours. But yeah. he, he always overruns and gets excited. So I mean, I don't know what's going to go on. Tell me this: How was the um, How was the movie premiere in London? Uh, yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that going on to Netflix? Is it? I'm not sure what's going. I'm not sure what deal they've done. It's in the. Yeah. It's out on DVD. So yeah, I, I assume it would be it in the Sonic cinemas for a day. So if you didn't get to see it, you didn't see it. But it's on. It's on iTunes and it's on DVD. Yeah, because that's the thing nowadays. It's just like not many people go to cinemas anymore. It's, you know, it's cheaper just to like a lot of money. The, the amount of money that gets wasted on reels <clears throat> and distribution for cinemas. Yeah, it's just just stri- straight. Just go to straight. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but <clears throat> that'll go on Netflix. That would Paul. That'll go on Netflix. Well, I, I, as I said to Charlie, I said, "Listen here, mate. I didn't know me and Bonehead were narrating the whole documentary." Where's Michael? In fact, get me a pint. That'll be a start. Bone, Bonehead was narrating it as well, was he? Yeah, well, me, me, me and Bone did the interview on the same day, uh, different times. Yeah. I, I didn't see it. I mean, I went down to the um, to the editing suite to meet Gavin, the um, the, fe- the posh fella from Dublin who they brought in from the McGregor movie. And I went uh. in to see him and he said, do you want to see yourself on the screen? I said, no, 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 no we don't, we don't do that. But I... No. Because they all said, "Oh, you got a great part in it. You look great." And I, I'm just thinking, it's just an interview. And if you look at it, I'm doing most of the most of the talking. And I mean, tell me, what what character were you playing in the film? Oh, myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I was. I was. I was I, well, no, because I was. I remember that day well. I was like knackered or hung over or something. And yeah. the wig, the wig was looking very grey. And I was like, "What the fuck? You could have warned me." It was a grey day. It was it was definitely a great day when I turned up to be interviewed there with the with, 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 with the book. Yeah. Was it was it a day for the just for men? It was a day for the just for give me some hair product here and why do I <laughs> why do I look very unlike George Clooney? So yeah, 
everyone's like, oh, you look great. I went, yeah, well, mm, one of What's them. The, um, it's fucking what? late now, isn't it? You don't get a second chance. Nah, hey, look, fuck it. Do you know what I mean? What can you do? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I seen recently there was a bit of there was a bit of uh, light hearted beef between uh, Noel and, and Lewis Capaldi. Uh, any, yeah, any yeah, thoughts yeah, on that? that? I mean, I'm still, why would you even bother with someone called Lewis? Firstly, and then his name's Capaldi. I mean, that's like a shit Bacardi breezer or something. I mean, why, why would you even give him the time of day? Because you know, these kids are like they can have number one records, but what does he mean? What does number one mean? Doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah, it doesn't really, because you're not getting any cash out of it. Spotify and fucking iTunes are the one making the money. Oh, but yeah, Spotify is what? 30 million hits or something, and you get like a A cheeseburger. A a cheeseburger without without the pickles. If you're lucky. Without the pickles. Pickles is extra. Extra for pickles. It's like, but how the fuck are they getting away with it, Paul? I, 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 like, what's your what's your insight to this? Like, how how is it that uh, a massive streaming service has somehow managed to take everybody's music, yeah, and ma- they make a profit off it? What, what's the fucking crack there, like? I I mean, it started with iTunes, didn't it? It started with Apple. Apple ruined it for everyone. Apple. Well, but, yeah, they did. But well, the thing I, is, I, I, Apple introduced. I mean, most people had uh, like a tape recorder or a. You know, like a Walkman. Yeah. Or didn't have many, many tunes. And, and they brought out the iPod and just basically said, here you go, steal music. And then they put on a, li- they put on a little iTunes festival at the roundhouse every year, but we didn't really put it back. And they started it. And then, well, and Napster started it. And then I, uh, Apple did it. And then Spotify just came in and said, oh, well, we've got this streaming service. Here's 50 pence. You're either in it or you're not. I mean, I think there's a few bands that are not in it. Radiohead said no, but the rest of them, yeah. And Radiohead think... said no. Well, they're, they're on iTunes, Radiohead. Yeah, well, they're not on uh, Spotify. Spotify, yeah. Because that's the thing, like, with, with iTunes, they you'd, I mean, like, I pay a tenner a month. And uh, and it used to be where you used to pay to, like, you didn't have to pay if it was your own music that you'd, you'd uploaded yourself. Yeah, but now you have to pay even just to listen to your own music. So they they make you pay for the service. Then Spotify came up as a rival, and now for some reason no one gets paid for anything they have up there. Well, and it makes what, me wonder where the fuck is the money? That, like that is the biggest transferal of wealth ever when you consider it. Like, well, I'd like to know who's behind Spotify. I mean, I know it's based in Sweden, and I, I did. Yeah. I had the premium once, and I tried to leave, and you have to send some fella an email, and he sends you an email back going, "Why are you leaving?" Oh yeah, yeah, and it's like. <laughs> Because I don't fucking need your service, all right, mate. He's like, and is it an automated reply or is it someone actually genuinely? I, th- I think it's a bot. And anyway, because I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm starting a new radio show tomorrow at the Boogaloo. And oh, with need... Jerry O'Boyle's gaff. Yeah, and you need um, Spotify, and I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake! So now I've had to go Spotify Premium again. Oh, fuck. But, but then half the tunes I would have played or DJ do are not on Spotify. Exactly. So yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? So I've, I've had to make a playlist just for Spotify, and then work something out next month. And will not- you get any coin from Spotify for your services, like? Uh, no, I'm not sure. What's it? No, I'll probably get a couple of pints off Jerry. Oh, that day. It's a fucking bird in the hand is better than no pints in the bush. Yeah, so, I mean, I've, 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 I've tried to work out what I'm doing, so I'll just play a few tunes. I've, I've got a I've got a Scouse fall guy. You always need a Scouser of these things. They're always happy and brilliant. We won the Champions League, mate, six, six and all this shit, and I'm bringing back that work with a bump on the radio. Admittedly, it was a boring enough match, but it would have gone either two ways. It would have been fucking end-to-end blistering, or it would have been like two equally matched forces just in deadlock in midfield. So be fair, uh, I, did, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't watch it. I was uh, washing my immense hair. So I'm, I'm, I, bet I'm, you, I bet you were fucking watching it. Go, go on, you scouts, cuts. Go on, you scouts. No, no, no. I no, thought, no, I thought no. United fans were bad, man. But the City fans, they're fucking. They're even. They're even worse. Well, no, no. It's because you smashed up our bus and got fined twenty grand. We got. We kind of pissed off with you. So, ah, uh, fair enough. You know, hey, I you know, the, 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 the everything to win thing. It's like this is Anfield. No, it's not. It's a fucking crap stadium held together with super glue with the other bit you put on. Oh, you're scared. He's like, we're not scared of anything. Give us our bus back. 300 grand bus, 20 grand fine. No ban. So, you know, we we, we got beef for Liverpool. It was an exciting race to the to the title and furnace. Uh, well, no, not like, really. Not not for us. 14 straight. See you later, dicks. That's just, that's just exciting for you. 
fighting for you, you won, you won the league by Christmas. And the amount of shit I was getting from non scousers and I mean, I mean, you, you're 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 a woolly back. You're from a you're nearly a scouser, but you're not. The rest well, of don't it, tell the audience that, man. Well, you're not, are you? You you're kind of from uh, Wallace, Wallace, mate. You got to like a river. Tranmere really is your team. Yeah, Tranmere. Like I, I just, I mean, there was lads when I was when I was in school in in uh, Saint Mary's in in uh, Wallasey and St. Albans, my primary school, there was a lot of lads who were big into Trammy Rovers as well as Liverpool. And I just, I, I, I just, there, was so, there was something really depressing about Trammy Rovers I just couldn't get into. I mean, the fact that they never got out of the second division as well was was something that I thought was like, ugh, nationwide shit, man. You know what I mean? used to play Friday night football and Stockport County was the same, like it's close to Manchester. And I, I used to have a mate called Leppy. Leppy the Leprechaun, massive yeah. Pogs fan. And he used to go to Friday Night Football, he used to go to Stockport, and he'd say, do you want to come to Stockport? I'm like, yeah, I'll go see City Saturday, go see Stockport Friday. I remember yeah. once we went to Tranmere away in the snow. It was like 1984 or something. Fuck you yeah. go 30 years on a bus, and Stockport fans are notoriously dickheads. And they'd all, they'd all be trying to, but this is this this was the the, the the you know the time of the all the football violence. And there'd be loads of fighting, and they'd be like, ah! Yeah. We didn't, it's like third, easy, third division football. Nobody be interested in the football. Oh, let's throw some snowballs. You know, like the, the little yeah, the, the fellow. Who's Any excuse football. for a rook, like yeah. And I'll be like Friday night in Tranmere. Can't wait. Do you yeah. think? Do you think an element of street fighting is is good for um? You know, not 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 going too far, but a couple of you know, just a couple of nice tender slaps thrown. Uh, no, no, they, they don't, they don't, they don't do, they don't do street fighting anymore. They do knives and shootings and. Be, yeah. be, beheadings. They don't. They don't. They don't go. Yeah. Ooh, I don't like you. Let's have a tear up. They don't do that anymore. They they just go straight for the kill. It's like they're watching too too many video games. Yeah, uh, that, that's something I've often wondered about. The fucking the, it, obviously not not sounding like one of these nineteen uh, eighties uh, like rock and roll record burners that they had in America. But sometimes, like I think I think some of the violence of video games is just fucking nuts, man. It's, it's like. Because you're looking at something that, like the the graphics are so good now, it, it actually it's real life, it's, isn't it? It's, it's almost well, like it's real life for some people. I mean, yeah. I'm too old for playing video games. I mean, I think I had a I had a PlayStation. No, 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 I didn't. No, I didn't. I went the other way. Everyone goes PlayStation. I went Nintendo. I don't know why, because you still have to pay for it. Yeah, Microsoft yeah, you, you run the Golden Eye and all that. I think Golden I, Eye. I think I put on one video game in my life. I went fuck this shit. This is yeah. too much. I mean, because we, we come from Atari in the eighties, yeah. And you come with video space games. Space Harrier right? was yeah. it? Was Space Harrier? And I don't and, know. Uh, I mean, yeah, we just come from basic, and then you go on these things, and it's like fucking different world. I think I just put it in the cellar and went, oh, "Fuck it." I'm not having that. I'm not having uh, that. Microsoft giving me money, but do you know uh, Jody Latham? Yeah, but oh, I'm from Shameless, is it? Yeah, I was on the phone to him last night, and he goes, "No way." You- he goes, right. you get, oh, you're getting Paul Gallagher on. Ask him this. Who's the most famous Gallagher besides Liam and Noel? Oh, well, he means him, does he? <laughs> I'd say me, ma'am. Actually, they can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a good lad, though, is, is Jody. I, I also said, he goes, hey, he him. Wants- yeah, he, he's sound, man. He, he's nice and rowdy. He's one of these lads who uh, just says says what he thinks. And, uh, yeah. yeah you, can't, a- you, can't, you can't do that and tell you anymore. You can't say nah. what you think. Oh, you'd, be, nah, you'd, be, you'd, be, you'd be arrested. You can't even say on Twitter, what is the point of having social, a social media when you can't say what you want? Oh, mate, Twitter's the fucking worst for it, man. It's just I know, like, that's, that's why I kind, of, I kind of stay off that. I know our kid's big on it, but I'm not for me. Every, everyone's offended. I had a taste of it the other day and all these fucking, like, all these fucking, just fucking left-wing activists who most of them probably are either failed art students, um, like... I don't even know what the fuck they are, man. You know, they, they claim to be doing something in the world of art, but, you know, I mean, like, I, I, I've always been left-wing myself and an anti-war advocate and whatnot, but I fucking, there was some some bullshit thread where I thought I'd do a bit of trolling and it backfired on me, and uh, next thing you have people come out of the woodwork going, racist! I'm like, fuck me, man, you're trivial, trivializing the word racism, do you know what oh, I mean? No, like, uh, yeah, well, we're all we're all racist now. Apparently, we mentioned a word, and you're, you're racist. It's like really, I thought I was intelligent, but no, yeah, that's just I don't know I what's mean, going on. Imagine if these people, right? Imagine stick if them in they the eight, met... stick them in the eighties. I swear, 
to be. Yeah, but imagine wanna... if they'd met like fucking members of the Chelsea Headhunters who were fucking combat eighteen lads. Um, imagine if they actually ran in to proper fucking assholes who were into that oh, Mil- shit. Mil- 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 Millwall and yeah, them them kind of football and West Ham back in the eighties. Oh yeah, they they'd, they'd be like, uh, "Mommy, can you pick me up, please, from my Uber?" <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's 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 a totally different world. I mean, oh, it's so fucking soft, man. Like, here's the thing, right? Like, I grew up in I grew up in Swinford. Uh, a ginger lad, grown up in Swinford, who had ADHD, couldn't keep his mouth shut, and I had a Scouse accent, and I was a big lad. So, you know, I was constantly being fucked with. But you just the thing is, like, and then as as you know, your, your family were all Irish and working on the building sites over in. Yeah. In uh, Manchester, Manchester, and, you, and, and you're fucking bollocked, man. By you're bollocked by hard cases all day. Like for me, like my dad, my dad be like, "Son, yeah, fucking no, fucking just the fucking job, son." You know, I just I'm, when I work oh, with yeah, my I, uncle. I, 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 yeah, I, I used to work with my uncles. So oh, never again. I mean, I kind of speak to them once every five years if I yeah. see them at a family gathering. But other than that, fuck off. Oh, you, no, no. You, you just don't want to. They'd, they'd be like, they'd, I mean. They'd pick you up at six in the morning. You'd be like, oh, "Where we go? Where are we going today?" Carlisle. <laughs> that's, that's a four-hour drive, and you're obviously knackered. So you're in, you're in the van. You're nodding off. You're thinking, "This is boring." And they'd fucking slam the brakes on. You're like, "Nearly fly through the window." It's like, "What's up? Where you come?" So we got another five hours. And then you'd get. What were you working on, Paul? Gas mains. So we'd, gas mains, we'd, yeah. we'd land in a field in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. the gas had begun. We'd have to dig a fuck by hand. There'd be no mini digger. No, no. Trenches. Oh, young... Yeah, he'd be on the graft, obviously. And I'd be yeah. on the shovel. And the receiver, he's the giver. Yeah. And they'd be giving muck out everywhere. Then you'd dig it all out. The grab... The... We had a great grab driver, Johnny Marr's dad. Yeah. John... Who? Johnny, Johnny Marr's dad. Johnny Marr's dad. Johnny Marr, Johnny Marr, yeah. Well, John, he's called John Marr. He used to be the grab yeah. driver. So he'd come out... Yeah. How you going? Then Johnny's new single from Electronic in the cab. I'm like, yeah, cool. Get it. Get this grab around here and shut up. They'd fill it and they'd be off. And then we yeah. go home. They'd come back the next day and we'd do the rest of the digging and smash out the main and put the new main in. And I'd be covered in. I mean, I'd have to go home in my undies. That's how bad it was. Fucking hell, man. Yeah. I mean, You'd be destroyed. You couldn't go near your mother and she'd be like, what have you been doing? Rolling around. I went, fucking been digging, fucking holes, by. But that's, that's, the, that's the funny, like, the thing is, like, a, a lot of, a lot of you know, the, the, these people who are fucking giving out on Twitter and all that, they come from fucking wealthy backgrounds. Uh-huh. Obviously, they were really good at repeating the curriculum and memorizing what needed to be done yeah. without questioning the fucking... Sheep, 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 yeah, sheep. Pure, yeah. Sheep. Uh, like, because uh, sometimes I'd watch a bit of David Icke and... Uh, I, like, I, like, I, like, I like him, he's bonkers. Yeah, he's an, it, but like you know, it's I, I'd fucking watch him before I'd watch anything from the BBC because it's at, le- exactly. at least at least it's fucking controversial. Like if someone tells me I can't do something, then I'm like, fuck me, I want to do it. He's got, he's got loads of points, David. Until he talks about reptiles, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I can't yeah. get me around that. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, it, yeah, exactly. What can you what can you say? You, you can't you can't win them all. But uh, you know, it, but so one one thing he, he he it was just like a video came up and it said. Um, you know, he was, he was talking about like you make a child sit through fucking eight hours. Like children should be, children should be learning through activities and and make it fun for them. I mean, and the fact that you 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 know you got both parents have to work now and they're still not still not getting the fucking bills paid, and then you're handing your kids over to be fucking educated by the state all the time, and it's just kind educated of educated by iPads. If you, if you notice, now, yeah. if you notice kids, how to keep them quiet instead of oh, making so- them. Ru- Run round, yeah. Look at that big screen. You'll be blind by the time you're twelve. Crack yeah. on. That, that's what they yeah, That's that's the fucking way of the world, man. Everyone's so uh, scared now. You know, everyone thinks there's, there's there's fucking abductors and there's you know the, the, a fucking meteorite's going to come and strike <laughs> one of them on the back of the head. You know, someone's going to get eaten by a shark. It's just fucking fear, fear, fear. You know, it's like sky news, rolling news. Terrorists fucking... You can't play out in the street in case you get kidnapped. You can play out in my street. We, 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 we have a street party every year. I mean, I ignore it. Kids yeah. drawing on the pavements and making a racket. I'm like, fuck's sake. I need triple glazed <laughs> triple glazed windows to cut down with the noise. Well, they, no, but they, to be fair, they shut the road and they, they have a party and the kids play in the street. And you don't get that in London. This is a rare occurrence. I mean, I don't mind it for a day. 
Yeah, well, as as I was saying though, Paul, about like lads, who, like let's say my dad and his brothers and my mother's brothers and and my mum, and you know, the ones who moved to America, they worked hard. The ones who stayed in Ireland, they fucking worked hard. The ones who went to England, they worked hard. No, we used um, to send money back. Yeah, that's that's well, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, like, can you imagine? Like, most of your pay packet went back home, and the rest went on digs and pints. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll tell you two two story. And this is nineteen. 1996, just before the boom. Okay, yeah. true story. Get on this. You'll like this. This is what yeah. the boom did to Alan. Alan 1996, boom. in the middle of Oasis fame, my mother, because my mother would say to me, "Do you fancy going to Ireland?" And I says, "Who's going?" Just you. Where am I going? Well, you, you wouldn't mind getting the, the bus and the ferry and the horse and the cart and bring some clothes to your poor cousins in Tipperary. And I'm like, yeah, why not? So. You leave Manchester, you get on the bus to Hollyhead on the coach, yeah. then you get the ferry to Dublin, then you fanny about in bus hours, then you get a bus to Nina, then you get to hospital, Tipperary, a day later because you've missed the bus because there's only one bus a day. Yeah. And then you get picked up oh, yeah. by your, your uncle and you've got two sports bags and go, there you go, poor cousins, there's some clothes. Now you fast forward five years, 2001, two. The yeah. same poor cousins in Tipperary are married. They've got his and her BMWs. They own stables of horses. I'm going, what the fuck, fuck is going on here, guys? And I, I said to one the other, the other year when I seen him, I said, would you ever drive to fucking London and give me some clothes? <laughs> well, we wouldn't be doing that now, boy. We wouldn't be doing that for stupidity. It's like, <laughs> that's, that's how crazy it's gone. So how so for for the the audience who don't know your um your dad's side is from from a slain me, me, me no, no, Dooley Drogheda Dooley are they from Drogheda way are they well, yeah it's near there isn't it Dooley up from Drogheda Drogheda you know these little things got a funny accent over there yeah so that's Dooley and then the other well I've not been there since I was a kid and yeah, um the other side then the other yeah we're we're Hardy books from Mayo next town to okay. you Martin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because the funny thing is, you're, um, doesn't your mother come from? Is it from Bushfields? No, she's from Mullen Morthog is the is the full name, but it's, they shortened it to Morthog. M A D O G U E. Like yeah, a little nondescript. But would you have been in Swinford a good bit? Yeah. Well, I think was that uh, aquidistant? Uh, is that the word? Aquidistant. Aquidistant, from, uh, mate. That's the one, lad. That's the one. Uh, from um, yeah, we'd be. Three miles outside Charlestown, if you went to Morlog, or maybe four miles, and then you'd be another three to Swinford. So you're kind of halfway. So, yeah. you know, when they go and pick up the pension, the grannies, the granny would go on the Friday to Charlestown. Well, then the aunties and uncles who were from Muller Mordog would go to Swinford. Yeah. So you'd, you'd go to you'd go to the pair of them. Did you, uh, you, you, you were saying before that you used to go to discos, teenage discos, and the either side. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's... <laughs> Very, very, very strange island in the eighties, early eighties, nineteen eighty-two. I think uh, penguin shoes were in fashion, and then black, the black ones with the white tip. Oh, the the wing tips. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, no, there wasn't the high heel heel ones. They were the seventies, but this is the early eighties. They were like, it's like, um, what was the band? Kid Creole and the Coconuts, like little zoot zoot shoes. Oh yeah. Anyway, I'd fucking I'd land into Mayo. Me, me, me uncle Paddy got rest his soul. He's Yorkshire miner. He's from. More though, but he lived in uh, Yorkshire 40 years. And I'd be going, uh, have you got a town, Uncle Paddy? He went, we'll go in for one one drink. I'll drop you in, young lad. So we go in and we'd have one game of pill. And he'd look at me and I'm going, uh, I'm not going home now. And he's going, well, if you're not going home, you're going to have to throw a lift. Leave you to it. I went, oh, cool. So I'm there, 16, 17. What's New going on? Scene. New on the scene, yeah, and they they know straight away. They look at you, fuck at the fuck of blowing the air. Who's that fuck? Then someone that's just they know who you are. Anyway, you go to a disco, and this is before you didn't really have draft beers at a disco. No lager. You'd have a stout. Bottle of stout. Bottle of stout. Oh, warm, man. warm, warm stout. Fuck. Side owner. Carol um, cigarettes. Carols and um, carols or majors. Major, yeah. And then there'd be one grumpy fucker behind the bar. Oh, you're on stout. There you go. You're handing the stout. Then you'd look around, and all the girls would be on one side, and the boys on the other. Yeah. And they wouldn't speak to each other. They'd just be staring at each other. They're staring at each other, going, 
oh, that one, who's that one? No, she's related to this one and up the road. And then can't touch her. She's a cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you would, you would, you'd speak to no one the whole night because nobody would know you. So then you, you know? go, then you go outside for the then the end, the annual fight for the chippy, the chipper. They'd all be boxing each other's heads, and then you'd walk out the road. There's no lights, so you're three miles out there. You could be get hit by a badger or anything. And if 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 you got a lift, you were lucky. And then if not, you knock on the granny's door. Is that you? Yeah. Well, I'm getting fucking in here now. You get killed out there. I was going to say, was there much fighting going on when you were? That was one thing that I that when I moved back to Ireland, I was shocked at, at how visceral the street fights were. I mean. I thought, you know, growing up in a semi-well-to-do suburb in England where, or in, near Liverpool where people talked hard talk, but then you came back to Ireland, it was like big lads who had, like, like they were in, like, fourth year, but they had hairy chests. And yeah, yeah, big, big hands like shovels. Yeah, and calloused hands and fucking big bastards, man. Just, they just like, want to go fighting. Yeah. And, like, I think my first week in school, I was I was hanging out with uh, my cousin, Yvonne. <laughs> She was uh, two lads scrapping outside this place called TPs, which was like a, a youth club for kids. But th- like, th- I was amazed at how lawless it was. Like, there'd be kids just fucking smoking ciggies, and like the, like the upstairs of this place where there's a pool table and a couple of uh, arcade machines, just the whole room was full of smoke. <laughs> Even in the journal, like the the, the school journal, there was a, like there were a load of rules, like no cannabis or anything. Else. I was like, wow, they've even got fucking drugs in school over here, man. It was just. And then they had like the grungers go around. They didn't have any of that in the eighties. I mean, warm bottles of stout. You yeah. didn't really get any draft. Not not in the little nightclub bit. Then a big fight in the chippy, and then the long walk home with no street lights. And when there's no cars anyway, so you you may get one lift. You'd see one car. By the time you seen the car, you'd be at your granny's door. And she'd get in here, you. You get killed. <laughs> like, okay, whatever. Do you reckon that was the uh, inspiration for Wonderwall? <laughs> not, not, uh, not too sure. <laughs> The walk yeah. home from the fucking chipper in Charlestown. It's three, three miles. I mean, no, not one street light, and it's just like the d- d- ditches either side. So if you've had too many bottles of stouts, you go careering. You're not getting out. You're getting hit by a badger and never be seen again. <laughs> no one's gonna, no one's gonna find you. No, and, and and here's the other thing. On top of all that, right? You're walking through pitch black. It through these ditches, and then your head is just fucking full of all these ghost stories that people are telling you around the fire. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. You like. Yeah. I, I tell you what's there, there's a really bad one. If you go down, I think my mum's got a house now just outside of Charlestown, and there's uh, the Ballymote Road. If, if you walk through there, there's like trees all kind of come up in a in a circle, mm. and when they start shaking, you're like, "Fuck it up!" Gonna be murdered. But my mum, she when when she was a teenager, she had a job in town in Swinford, and she lived probably about five miles outside town, and she'd have to cycle in and out every every day. And then she'd be cycling home at night. And there was one house on, it's in a village called, um, oh, what the fuck's it called? Carnacull. And it's on a bend. And man, it's one spooky house. And it's just like, it's derelict there now. And apparently it was, it was derelict back then as well. But it's just all covered in trees. And it's on a bend. So, you know, every time you go around the bend, you're, you know, you're, you're anticipating something. And then to make it worse, apparently someone had said like, the guy who lived there, my mum said, apparently that fella, he used to see visions. He said he looked up into the sky once and he saw the God's army fighting the devil's army in the sky. And I was like, fucking hell, what was that lad smoking? <laughs> yeah, it was all the ghost stories. I mean, I know we, we used to be kids. I remember this. They used to have a bus. They used to get the bus from Swinford into Charlestown. They don't, they doesn't do it anymore. They stopped it. Necessary waste cuts. Anyway, there used, to, there used to be this stop just a mile outside the town, and these two black brothers would get on. And they wouldn't be black; they'd just be yeah. their faces would be dirty. Yeah, were they the Durkins? Were they? Uh, I don't know who they were. The couple of twins, and they, but they freak everyone out. All well, the they're really tall. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I'm not sure. All the grannies and the boys go, "Oh, the black fellas are coming," and they weren't black; <laughs> I mean, they're just white, just covered in muck. Yeah, but they did. They, 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 were, they, were, they were fairly frightening. I mean, if you, were, you didn't know them, I mean, they didn't they didn't speak; they just look at you going. Mm, they just mumble to themselves because there was two guys also who you'd often see them on the street corner in Swinford and, and maybe they, it's the they, same one I think yeah, the dead were they, they were. yeah were they wearing green jackets yeah <laughs> yeah and the faces the, I, were black I, yeah I know the two guys right? it, like like you could imagine it makes you wonder how, how do they how did they live like that 
Do you know what I mean? Like, what must, what must their like bed have looked like? Just oh, like a pile really? of coats, straw, and some coal straw. bags. That's it. <laughs> straw, straw. It won't be none of that fancy shit. But like, you'd see people who lived in. You know, there was no reason to be living like in, in those conditions. Well, we didn't see... have any. We didn't have any water. I mean, we we didn't have any water until uh, the eighties. We had to used to wash in the stream. Well, but that's the thing. Like when I'm telling people over here in Stockholm, <laughs> like uh, what what like our parents' generation went through in Ireland. Like I was yeah. telling my um, a couple of guys here in, on, on Sunday, I was like, yeah, my my mother used to have. To, I'm a, my dad. They used to have to walk across the fields barefoot to school. Same as my mother, and she used to have a. Didn't have a pair of shoes. She had a pair of wellies, and that lasted you all year round. Yeah, and the t- so a ten mile through. a ten mile walk to mass. Who the fuck ten. walks ten miles to mass? Oh, you just man. you just you just go an extra four and jump on the train and go to England, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, that's <laughs> what they did. Yeah, so okay. ten miles to mass. You know what I mean? And ten miles back. <clears throat> wow. No, and, and no pints. No pints. Yeah, some of those. I'm like, I mean, they were hard people. So I mean, and that's so that's what that's what I'm saying in in comparison to, to like people people today they don't know they were fucking born, and yeah. you know they they moan and complain about fucking bollocks, man. It's like oh my Wi-Fi signal is cutting out. It's, you, it's fucking insane, man. Like they they come their no, parents. No no, no, no. To be fair, I do complain about Wi-Fi in the West of Ireland. We have one meg. I know. And I'm, who's that with? Oh fuck no, Vodafone. But uh, we, yeah. we 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 got told we are. We are we we are we cannot join you to our super fiber five G broadband because you're not you're not near enough. It's like you know what? Yeah, well, I've heard the same thing about North Dublin, like as in the city, they're saying that it's not connected. Broadband in Ireland for twenty four years. <laughs> twenty four years. Hey, maybe like, better off. Daughter, living next door to Alice. Twenty four. <laughs> my mother's like, why can't I watch Netflix? Because we've only got one meg. That's why wow. you can't watch Netflix. Well, you need to get over here and sort it out. So I went, well, <laughs> when, when one finishes the world tour, one, one will pop into Twilight Town and get it all sorted for your mother. How does, how does, because your mum's from Burnage, uh, or she is the, uh, is from Burnage. And, well, uh, no, we, 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 we landed in Longsight as uh, yeah. kids. Well, me, me and Noel were in Longsight. Liam, Liam is Burnage. Yeah. Yeah, she's still uh, you, in the same house. She loves it. Tell me this, uh, something like, uh, well, I'll get on to the supersonic documentary that, that you're oh, yeah. in. That that scene, when I, when I seen that, I was like, wow, man, it's it's like looking at my own family. Who's your, when your mother's like, I'm just doing Liam's dirty washing. I was like, it's just looking yeah. at my own mum. Jody Latham, he said, uh, he goes, oh, yeah, ask him, is he from Burnage or from Bernage? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah but, no, Bernage is the term. Bernage. <laughs> no, I was, I, was, I was born in Longsight. A roughneck, Manchester long sight, yeah. long sight, Manchester thirteen, and that's where oh. I used to I used to hang around. I didn't, I didn't hang, never hung out in Burnage. Yeah, I, all, uh, all my I, mates are from long sight. Long sight, because I'm not too familiar with Manchester. I mean, like, I, me, me dad just had just outside the centre. All oh, right, uh, two miles from, three miles from the centre. Yeah, because me, me dad probably, maybe like. My dad knows people who, who your parents know in Manchester because he was. I remember as a kid, he was working for a, a Pakistani guy called Mr. Shah, and, he, and Mr. Shah used to call me dad, Mr. Vin. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, so he was working on that job and a couple of other sites around Manchester, and like you know, and, and my, my uncle Martin as well. He, he was a diesel fitter, so he'd take me around to all these places. I remember when I was a kid, like you'd find these stacks of porno mags. In like these building sites, I'm like, oh, yeah. Dad, look, it's more of them. It's more of them dirty magazines. It's like, uh, good lad, son, uh, good job, yeah. you. You help tidy up them dirty magazines. I confiscate these. I, 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 I still love work, work, working on the, the gas. I mean, it depends who you're with. If you, if you're with a decent gang, I mean, there was we had a foreman who had the hob the hobnail boots. Remember the oh, hobnail yeah. boots? Hobnail boots, yeah, old school. Oh, and this this hob- guy. Hob- I mean, if I, if I forget what his name was, but we, uh, you'd, you'd get picked up at the stand, the stand. Yeah. So you know, you'd, exactly. So they'd be like, it'd be, it'd be like a meat rack for, for navvies. Yeah. There'd be 20 years there and all the vans are pull up and people are jumping different ones. And then you're left there with three or four and you're going, ah, well, maybe we're not going to get the start today. And then this van pulls up beside you, big Dave with hobnail boots. Get in the van, boys! Just, just you, whipping you. Yeah, basically, <laughs> with electric cables. Throw you in the back of a transit with a load of headballs, and you, you wouldn't know where you were going. But they drop you back at night. 
And this and it'd, be, mystery tour. Know, but it'd be freezing cold. So imagine he's got a t shirt on, big arm out the window, and then the, the wind comes in the back of that van. You're freezing and you can't say you're cold. He'd be like, Cold are you? I'll give you cold boys. And, but, and he's probably blasting hot air on himself in the front of the cab. Ex- no, but he'd get out pissing himself, laughing, Oh, you're cold. You are too warm, your boys. Get a hold of that shovel. Yeah. Mental. My uncle Martin, man, it, like it, I, he used to bring me out to work when I was like twelve, and he'd come and pick me up on a Saturday morning at like half six. And I remember when I was like, "Wow, they have cartoons on for kids really early. Why didn't I ever get up this early and watch them?" But fuck the cartoons, go to fuck, go to. Fuck. And then you drive, like, like you say, we'd be off looking at machines up in uh, up in Yorkshire, and then just I'd be hanging around on building sites. But he'd say, "Jump into that high hatch and give it a fucking spin, quick." And then he'd have me like driving JCB. It was fucking brilliant fun, like. I mean, I've, I've, I've never known as many paddies to get excited at the sight of tarmac. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's because, because, You know, because it might set like concrete within two minutes. <laughs> and it'd be pissing down with Ray and you're going, I don't really want to do this. Get on there, Ray! They'd all get excited. It's like they've never seen it before in their lives. And now we'd, we'd, we'd be, I'd be like, what the fuck? There's only fucking tarmac. I, I don't get excited about anything. So they'd, they'd be yeah, getting... Did he do... Uh, he did uh, flagstones and curbs no, and... Concrete no, no, he, no he, did the, he did suspended ceilings, but you know the um, blocks they were like cold, cold dust blocks they come, they're heavy fucking things they were about 10k yeah. each he put blocks so he'd be concrete beams you know like you'd, you'd yeah. go the first no 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 so you know like you um, you'd have you know floors in, in industrial buildings mm-hmm. so, so the, it's usually scouse brickies I say the scousers would build the bricks up yeah. and then we'd come along and put the concrete beams in, and in the middle of that would be the blocks, and then you'd grout over the top. All ah, right, yeah, some yeah. of them things you'd stand on because they're only coal dust. I've often yeah. en- ended tumbled down two flights and ended Fuck nearly down. broke me back. And my dad would go, Ah, oh, you'd be all right, have a cup of tea, have a fucking cup of tea. And then he died. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, 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 shit like that. I mean, we, we got thrown off loads of jobs. He's, he's, a, he's a, he, 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 he was a hooligan, yeah. If the concrete. <laughs> If the concrete beams didn't turn up on time, or the blocks didn't turn up on time, he'd get a he'd get a, a steel saw out and go and threaten to kill the, the crane driver. He he was you know, outrageous. Yeah. The amount of times we booted off buildings, I'd you're bad. He'd be like, "All right, we're getting paid today." No, you're not. I got barred. That's fucking not my fault. You got barred for being a dickhead. Yeah, he'd go screaming and he'd go and kill people. He didn't he? Was he a bit of a was he a bit of a Bernard Hill and boy from the black stuff? Yossi uh, Proper hothead. Yeah, he's from me though. He's from. Come yeah, on. Sure. look, look at, how was that for you when you uh, when Mayo played me in the finals of of uh, oh, I, was, I, I was I was in the Mayo and, and I ran into a yeah. lot of me fans outside. What are you doing? I was like, fuck off. <laughs> no, I, I was in the me in the Mayo and yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I'm staunch Mayo. Uh, that was the question I meant to ask you about Supersonic. You know, in Supersonic, the way Liam says he gets hit on the head with a hammer, and next thing he just starts singing, and and he's in fairness to him, he's fucking unreal at singing. Uh, I, I I actually watched uh, a documentary, or like a short documentary. It was called "The Man Who Rewired His Brain," and basically what happened to this guy is he was coming out of a club, a pub after doing karaoke in San Francisco one night, and he was like the head of head manager of this futon shop. But these lads just fucking jumped him for no reason, clocked him on the back of the head, gave him a few digs. He ends up in the hospital with a ruptured kidney and concussion. So after the after the meeting, he ended up just fucking being shit scared of going out, put like three layers of blankets over the window and uh, just stayed in for three months, depressed. But then when he eventually started getting over it, he got counseling. He could he could see like the uh he could see the the ge- geometric patterns in everything. Like like a, a bike wheel or or like you know you, you could just see everything in terms uh, yeah, yeah. of wheels. Pro- Project Fear, mate. It's, it's, it's happens. Yeah, I, mean, I, got, I got. I remember I was a kid. I got me got me out both. You'll you'll like this story. It's a very sad story. Uh, we had um, I was saying sixteen, seventeen, and this before we went into the city centre of discos, Saint yeah. Richards or one of the one of the Irish church novelty centres that have a disco. Yeah, and you're thinking ah. I go over to Levin's room. What can possibly go wrong? And because, you know, you, you like to dance and be a boogie boy, I'd dance on the dance floor and next minute girls would be there and then the next minute boys would want to kill you. Yeah. Um, Classic. Wait, you know, yeah, they did. They fucking waited. They waited till I was on my own. And then I got smashed on both arms with iron bars. Fucking Jesus. 
that, that cost me my place at uh, uh, the uh, what was it? What was it called? It was that the, the council works. It was yeah. like I was meant to go on a plumbing course, and the, yeah, I couldn't go because I had two broken hands. But yeah, fuck's sake, man! Costing my career as a plumber. And, and who were the lads who did it? I don't know. Just fucking jealous cunt. Listen, yeah. it's not my not my fault. I, I, I can bust moves on the dance floors. Exactly. Hey, fucking player haters. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but, no, um, no, 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 needless to say, I don't dance anymore. But uh, but did, yeah. did you notice a change? Because because basically, some people say if you get a whack on the head, it can it can like open yeah. up a part of your brain that you don't use. I'm not did, sure. Did yeah, you yeah, that actually happened yeah, with Liam, or did he have any? I'm not sure. I, yeah, he, he was the co- the cock of the school. You know, the, you have the cock yeah. of the school. Usually a cock of the skill is a big lurch, seven foot yeah. six. You don't fuck with him because he kill you. But yeah. in, in, in Liam's, uh, yeah, Liam was apparently the cock of the skill. So when two skills come to fight, like they do, he yeah. got hit. He got hit. Style. Yeah, he got hit on the head with a hammer. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if that made him mad or good. I'm not too sure which yeah. which, which way that went. I mean, I'm seven years old and he come in. Oh, could be hit with a hammer. Like, good. Maybe you could do with another hammer on the other side. <laughs> Not some sense this year. Did you ever hear of the band The Helicopters? They're, uh, mm. a Swedish, they're a Swedish rock and roll band. They're fucking brilliant, man. Like they're they're huge in Sweden and Germany, but for some never, reason never never, never heard of them. broke in England. But no. uh, well, they'd be mates with your man, you know, the, or the soundtrack of our lives. Oh, yeah, be, I know, I know. Yeah, Eb- Eb- Ebot or, or Ebot, Demi, yeah. Demi Roussos, as I call him. Because yeah, Andy Bell was doing something with them, wasn't he? Well, because Andy Bell lived in Tirasur. Yeah, he lived, he lived in Stockholm. I know, I know the other guys, uh, Robert and Magnus from Bangers and Mash. Yeah, club club night, and, and I know the, the dude from the Hives. Which one? The Pella. The is it? Yeah, Pella. Yeah. We, we, in fairness, we, we, they're they're great shows, they're man. The Hives. Oh yeah, they're energetic fuckers. Yeah, but I also like the way he's like, "Yeah, we are the greatest in the world." So don't fuck with us, you know. It's that kind of like arrogance, which yeah. is uh, it's funny as fuck, man. No, no, but they are, they are, they, they, they're nice guys. We, we we toured Australia when we were on the the big day off or the big day out, which is basically mm. you do five shows in big day on the pints. Well, mate, yeah, you do five five shows in three weeks in Australia. Yeah, it was, it was Snoop Dogg, The Hives. Who else is on it? Pearl Jam. Look, yeah. Look, Little, little Matt Miller, who's recently died, the little rapper, yeah. uh, Portugal Man, Tam Impala. There's loads of bands. Hmm. Big day off. What a laugh! I mean, because you, because you, you start in Auckland. I think I, I tore I tore me calf in Auckland, having too many pints, Martin. You know when you get off the plane, you know, you know when you get off an all day flight, you don't go to bed. Yeah, been been there, done that, mate. And then you just carry on for 24 hours, and then you end up. You end up with a guy from Hull who's over there filming a Ron, Ron Seal advert. <laughs> <laughs> see, but you, know, you, you, laugh, you laugh, but I, I did see the same guy in Finsbury Park a couple of weeks ago. No way. No, word of a lie, he was getting an ice cream. And he, he was staring at me. Like, what are you staring at? He had, he, had, he had no hair. He had, he had alopecia by this time. When I yeah. met him, he had loads of hair. Yeah. He, went, he went, oh, it's me from all one seal advert. Remember me, Auckland? I went, all right, mate. What happened to your hair? He went, oh, it all fell out, stress and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I, 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 tore, I tore me calf in Auckland and I had to hop around the festival and then hop around planes and fuck, everyone felt sorry for me. And then I think I walked into Sydney and I recovered then. But, yeah. Not grand. So, so you didn't have any uh, ligament damage or anything? No. Just a sprain? Just a fucking, just all just day. A- just Piss up. Oh, yeah. Basically, don't go drinking with the crew. Basically, yeah. That's the moral of the story. They know what they're doing. No, they're fucking animals. Don't go <laughs> drinking with the crew. Yeah. Don't go drinking. If you go on tour, stay away from the crew. The crew are professional lunatics. Yeah, nutters. And they will destroy you. So, uh, speaking of which, you're Liam's tour manager now. Oh, I suppose you always were. Or what's the crack? No, no, when did, when... no, no, no I'm, I'm not his tour manager. He's got a tour manager. He's got a guy. Oh, I thought you were the tour manager. No, I'm just kind of his, his cooler brother who hangs out with a band and then when he wants to, he's usually somewhere else and he'll he'll text me and go, six in the morning, go, what are you doing? Well, I'm fucking sleeping. What are you doing? Oh, do you fancy a coffee? And then that's the code word for, do you want to go shopping? So you just go around wherever you are in whatever city you're in and, Watch him spend loads of money and go. All right, cool. Can I fuck off now? 
<laughs> I kind of think. I love uh, to see the two of them in interviews, and like some of the funniest moments are uh, when Noel said he called out Tom Chapman from Keen and oh. said he was a posh lightweight. Mm. I think I think Liam also quoted that um, like no one wants to be in a massive band anymore. It, it's all it's all fucking look at me, look at my shoes on stage. Oh yeah, look look, look at my pointy shoes. Oh, do you like my guitar? Oh, what a pedal this is. <laughs> no, no. It's, today's t- today's thing is all about lights. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. Ser- the serious amount of lights. Yeah. I mean, I take pictures. So it's that, like a light show. It, but it is. But when was the last time I, the lights are the number one single? Fucking lights! I've never seen so many lighting guys and video guys in my life. I mean, there's probably sixteen on our tour, just like band and crew. But then you get to arenas. There's fifty people you've never seen before in your life, and you're going. Who the fuck are you? Oh, I, I do the lights. I set up the strobes. I set up the side. It's just fucking lights. Yeah. Try to them to them, lads. I think because everyone's so shit musically. Yeah. Not everyone, but most of them are shit musically. The lights are put there to take it away from the fact that they've got no talent. Smoke and mirrors. And, uh, well, and the, the lighting people, I mean, that that is the fastest growing industry. Yeah. Really, if you can be a light tech or a video fucking tech, you're sorted for life. Yeah. Well, Musicians, sometimes I, well I do stage hand work over here and uh, now and again like in and it's just yeah, most of it is is um is most of it what you're dealing with is obviously you're gonna have like the the sound racks, the the uh, speakers and whatnot and the front of the house and snake cables. But but most of what what comes out the back of the trucks are light racks and uh, fucking laser machines and and LED panels and that smoke, kind of thing. Smoke machines. Strobes, yeah. I mean, I I, I hate. I, I do I, I do plug the odd smoke machine out. I, I give a fuck a festival or not. If it's in the way, it's in my poisoning me. It's getting booted. Yeah. There's just no. Uh, need to smoke. But, but but look at it like this. Imagine if you went to see Hendrix, fucking Phil, uh, Thin Lizzy, uh, the Who, you know Zeppelin back in the day. You, you, even if it was like the Hollywood Bowl. You know, you, you're just looking at a stage and, and, like, there's none of these fucking lads on their phones the whole time. Oh, know, it, 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 it is kind of surreal. I mean, we were in Italy last week and, yeah, the front the front six rows, all phones. Yeah. And I said, I said to someone outside before the show, I said, what did you do before mobile phones? And they go, yeah, oh, yeah, mobile phone is good. Uh, selfie, picture, 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 Instagram. <laughs> They'll chase you around for Instagram pictures. It's like you're obsessed. Yeah, and, and the worst thing that ever happened on Ireland was giving a Paddy a mobile. Paddy is ruthless for a selfie. Yeah, <laughs> well, the funny, well, the funny thing is with, with with Ireland actually compared to Sweden, like the Swedes are very standoffish. Like they they have this kind of integrity buzz where like they they would really really want to talk to someone. Like for example, yeah, too scared. Yeah, um, because Will Farrell, like my my neighbor's uh, my neighbor's sister in law has a like a little kind of summer cottage by a lake outside Stockholm and Will Farrell's married to a Swedish woman and he was just chilling down by this by the water one day and everyone was like there's Will Farrell but they were like sure not and he's like yeah hey, how's it going and that was it like I seen like Alexander or Peter Skarsgård the actor just knocking around with one of his kids in uh in Sir Malm and everyone was just like no, no one bat an eyelid and I walked past him I was like fuck me man that's like Peter Scar scored, just knocking about. It used to be like that in Ireland before mobiles. You got to Ireland yeah. and you land in a pub and nobody they see you, but they wouldn't bother you. Yeah, not not now. Everyone's out with a fucking mobile. Hey, I'm a fucking Peter from Dillon. It's like here, I'm. A- yeah, like, I've spoken about this before, Paul. That that fucking phones ruined the crack altogether. Oh you yeah, I mean they. Uh, but tell me, in, in ter- would you ever move back to Ireland? No. What How for? Come? One meg, one meg broadband. <laughs> pubs, I mean pubs. They killed the pubs, but uh, with this fucking late license, like they they've completely siphoned everything out of Ireland with tax and fucking austerity, and you know it's like fucking. You can get ten or fifteen of your mates on a, an island off Ireland and have the crack. That's good, but yeah. otherwise you're just sharing your, you're just sharing your space with a bunch of divs with phones, and who are gonna. Well, you don't mind it, actually, I do. But yeah, it's one. Of, yeah, I mean, it depends. 
I mean, we, we, we had a great crack up in, uh, where, where were we? Mulrani. Mulrani, that place, in the, that bar in the middle of nowhere. That, that, was, that was good fun. Yeah, funny. Like, I, I, I really love getting back to Ireland. I mean, I, like, I, I love, I, like, Dublin's good crack. I know, I know you're not too too pushed on Dublin anymore. Oh, Dublin's like um, fucking shit hole, isn't it? A lot of there's a lot of yuppies and like see the boom is back again and it's brought back the kind of the arrogance of um, the, the, the of, D4 mob. Yeah, you know it's all about HD brows and fucking craft beards. You know what I mean? It's, but uh, but Dublin's great crack. I mean, I, I like even compared to New York, man. I reckon fucking Dublin, New York's not a pack on Dublin for the crack. New York's lost their soul. As soon, as soon as the rich, the rich moved in, that yeah, that, that, that was the end of New York. Same as Dublin. Dublin centers. I mean. There is a little bit. There's too many junkies in Dublin for me. You can't you can't stand outside a pub and have a fag without someone. Give us a cigarette, boss, and stick a syringe in you. It's like, come on, mate, chill out. But, yeah. that, but like, man, it's fucking nuts the amount of drugs. Like, I mean, like, it's just like a it's a it's a lifestyle choice, of, or it appears to be a lifestyle choice. It's like the, lifestyle it's, choice if you want to die, Ellie. I mean, if, if you're a dealer. That don't mean it is in like people like, yeah, I'm, it's like, I'm going to be a banker or, you know, I think I'm going to be a, like a solicitor or, nah, fuck it, man, I'm going to go on, on the heroin. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to deal in tech. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's like, where's it all coming from? The west of Ireland has been destroyed by fucking drugs. I and mean, you, you'd never see it, I mean, openly. But, yeah, but there's a, there's a lot of it over there. Well, there's, I mean, a... it's an island, isn't it? I mean, it gets in. I mean, and it's an island and there's loads of horses. So, Fucking ketamine. It's a horse tranquilizer. It's <laughs> everywhere. Enough, yeah. I don't know what the like. I don't know what the big deal is with ket. Everyone's on about how fucking no, great like, it is. It's shit, listen, it's not as good as a good pint of Guinness. I know that. Yeah, good. And you can't beat a good pint in, in Westport. What's what's your what's your favourite place in Westport? O'Malley's. Is I know, it? Not, I know. It's no, it's closed down. It's the the the, the Kerry fellow. He's let it go, and it's it's changed it to a different pub. But the best pint I've ever. No, it's not the best pint now. The best pint's been taken over by a place called O'Burns in Strokestown. In Roscommon, yeah, and it's um, it's one of them, you know, oldie worldy places where they got the, the the petrol pumps outside. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the little shop inside the door, and then you go in the back, and it's like the hills have eyes. There's ten locals <laughs> looking at you, going, "I oh, you know you're a faith boy. Where are you from?" But the Guinness is amazing. We're gonna have a little session over there. That video of uh, of, of Peter, Peter Copeland. Yeah. Was that in Strokestown? Was that in Drumlin? Yeah, no, no, I was in Strokestown. That was in the in a bar, and we we. We got off the plane and you, you know to crack yourself. We were twelve pints in. Yeah, you needed a few, you needed a few relaxers. I mean, we were on our way to Drumlish, but and I had organised a camera crew from Kildare to come up professionally. But we the right job. We were fifteen pints before we got there. There was no way anything was getting done. But yeah, no, the the Strokes Town one. There was a fella coming up and to Peter going, "Can you sing Dixie?" And Pete, Peter was ignoring him, and he come back again. I lost three uncles. What do you mean about it? And that kind of, it's just funny. It was just, it's hilarious. Hilarious, it's what hilarious. do you want me to do about it? <laughs> what do you want me to do about really drunk? Oh, yeah, but it was such a fucking, it was such a great answer to, to, to give him. And, and this is just daytime. This is about three o'clock in the afternoon. So the only people who are in there are the people who are retired or the people on the dole. It's one yeah. of them kind of places. There's no, it's not trendy. It's a tiny little bar, but great pints. It's like God's job centre. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, do you like mellets in, in Swinford? There's great uh, pints of mellets. Bolands does a great pint. I think I went in there a few years ago. It used to be Greenies as well. Greenies used to have. Oh, yeah. And then, it's what, what, shame Greenies is gone, man, because that was, that was a great pub back in the day. What's the dirty one on the corner? Is that Moors? Moors, yeah. That's that's the real the real howdy books. The, the, like, a, lot, a lot of like hard farmers, they go in there and they buy the cattle feed and what, what, few pints. That's where my dad would go in now if he if he was back. My dad would be either Mellets or Moors. And what, what, what's the one next to Lambs, the jewellers? The, it's now it's called, oh, uh, Campbell's. I've been, yeah, well, my auntie used to work in there, so I've been in there for a couple of scoops. Who's your auntie? Uh, my auntie Pauline, she used to work in Schweinfurt in the 70s, but she lives in, uh, on the border of Sligo, Chalestown. Uh, right. Before my time, she wasn't even born then, Paul. Oh, you the man, mate. You're, 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 you missed, you missed, you missed all the crap. Pints for fifty pence. Pints for fifty. Oh man, don't be fucking, don't be telling me that shit. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was telling that to Liam the other day. I said, I still remember getting my first pint for forty nine pence. 
Fuck's sake, man. And 10 fags for 25p. Well, it was also the thing as taxes, so you had to walk. But yeah, that was that was the script. 49 pence a pint. I mean, you'd be, you'd be hammered on a fiver. And yeah, you, you would be, man. It's a fucking like 10 pints, isn't it? Yeah, 10 uh, pints and change for fags. Hmm. Yeah, it's... um. Fucking inflation, man. I think I think when Ireland joined the Euro, that's that's what fucked us as well. Oh yeah, completely, completely, completely killed it. Yeah, because it it was almost like we had monopoly money then. Do you know what I mean? It was, and I remember the day, like I remember when I first handled Euros. I was like, what the hell's like the punt? It, it like what, nice big chunky discs they were like CDs, and you're like, yeah, you, you had a few of them in your like and a few fifties in your fifty p's, and then you were like, oh wow, it had a nice. It felt like you had a bit of. Uh, a bit of bullion in your pocket. Do you know what I mean? It felt like yeah. you had, there was a bit of weight to it. And next thing you had these twos and ones, you're like, what the hell is this? But uh, I mean, it's handy for travel and whatnot, but, uh, but like the, that, there's something really nice. Like, like my memories of being back in Ireland um, as a, like when I was a small kid and then, you know, in teenage years, you'd have uh, the picture of gay burn dressed as a nun on the back of a fiver. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I remember him from the late, 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 yeah, and I was I was on the late late late. I mean, I was on the best late late late. So you you can't get any better than the lineup. The lineup was amazing. Christy Moore, me and my mum, Jerry Adams. What a fucking lineup! <laughs> what combo! <laughs> what a what a lineup! Oh, and it was Martin McGuinness skulking in the background. When was this? Uh, ninety six or seven or something. Fucking hell, man. Uh, tell me this: You're also doing a you're doing a DJ set on um, Sunday in Cypress Avenue, is it? Yeah, in Cork, boy. In Cork. So, so any listeners fucking get down to that man if if you. Well, it's going to it's going to be sold out, so you, you better buy a ticket. It's five hundred capacity. I think it's nearly done. We got a late license. Well, so half past one. Oh, nice! That'd be and fucking I, good crack. And I I've got eighteen of the groovy gang in town. So if you see any Ross Common, Longford, Westmeath, Mancunian, Scouse, Glasgow, and Scutters, they're mine. Yeah, unfortunately, I won't be back for that. I would have fucking that, that, that sounded like it was gonna be, or it's, it's gonna be fucking great crack. Going oh, yeah. to see the, the gig as well. Uh, I, I like the way uh, Liam sings Columbia live as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a fucking belt river tune. There we were, and here we are, and all oh, this confusion. I, I was, I was out in, I did a gig in Mullingarda uh, like uh, about two weeks ago, and uh, I had Johnny, Johnny Mick Cronin and Fakra. Um, okay. Okay, hey, did you get me? Did you get me? Yeah, I'd, uh, yeah I do. I'd good laugh for them. Yeah. But I think I might be doing it. I mean, I'm talking to this lad, Jamie Kelly, who's in a band called Megacone, and he's on about booking me in for my own gigs in Fibbers, I think, on the 11th of July, and then maybe in Colombia in Mullingar and a few others. So I was going to say, Colombia in Colombia, you're going, you're going to B- Bogota. You're going a long way. I don't think you know <laughs> that. The Hardy books in Bogota. Bogota, you know that. Nah, they're, yeah. they're the fucking real hardy books over there, man. Oh, mate, South America. I mean, I went. Uh, I had a I had a chest infection when I landed in Buenos Aires, but Brazil. Was it? We we were told you could only go with it four streets, or else you're gonna lose your kidney. Jesus. So I mean, as you don't speak Portuguese, you're not gonna go around on the fifth street, are you? But I remember oh. some, car, some car driving past me and screaming at me in Portuguese. I'm thinking, I'm not fucking answering you in English because I'm gonna get a bullet in the head. So I just ignored him and walked on. But yeah, scary place, Brazil. I mean, amazing. I'd say so, yeah. yeah. Well, you do take your life in your arms walking down the streets. Especially yeah, it's, the it's fucking nuts over there, man. I mean, obviously you've got... Really, you, really poor. I mean, Buenos Aires is really poor as well. I mean, it used to be nice. I think it was the Paris of South America. But because of the Falkland Islands and I got an English accent, mm-hmm. you, I mean, I was told by certain people, you, you know, you could get in trouble there as well. So you got to kind of... Uh, well, it's funny because uh, Admiral Brown, uh, the, I think, I don't know, if Oxford man, yeah, and, and I never realized, it was only about 10 years ago I was having a conversation with, um, I can't remember who, I think it was Fergal Darcy's sister who was telling me that... Um, a big statue of him in Foxford, that's, 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 yeah. that's Bonehead country. Bonehead, it's Bonehead's mum from Swinford. Yeah, and they had a place in Foxford. Yeah. Dad- Where is she from in Swinford? Do you know? Oh, I'm not too sure. She's both dead now, but um, no idea. Yeah, because I was t- I was saying in the last podcast how uh, when I came out of school, fucking at 13, and don't look back in anger, just come out, and you've got uh, there's just a fucking white Rolls Royce parked in the parked up outside. Remember McDermott's? 
and uh, it was bonehead. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. Folks, but they're not only got some woolen mills. I don't know much about. Oh them. yeah, the Fox of Woolen Mills. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good food. If you if you're ever down there, nice nice bit of grub down there. No, I'll usually bypass them. I just go to Mulrani and Westport. And... Yeah, but if uh, if you're passing by the Fox and Woolen Mills, absolutely, uh, some some great salads, great pies, good stuff, great yeah, stuff, right. nice wines. Yeah. And pick up a nice iron jumper, not oh, yeah. on the way. And an old blanket to lay over your knees and go, ooh, that's nice. Mickey Flannery job. Or Mickey right. Flanagan. Put yourself in the outside washing machine and swim for it if you need to cool down by. Exactly, yeah. Just fucking put the put the laundry on. And, uh, that that white that white rolls that Bonehead was driving, was that the one um Alan McGee gave to Noel? Was he borrowing it off Noel or something? No, no. Uh, McGee gave Liam, uh, what was it, no, uh, chocolate brown Rolls Royce. Right? Yeah. What did he do with that? Is he I still think, going? No. I think he might have given it to Mark Coyle, who was the sound yeah. engineer on Definitely Maybe. I think he might have had it. I um, don't know. I've never seen it. I think, so, I think Liam, Liam got given a Rolex, like a shit Rolex, which he then okay. gave to me. And um, yeah. I don't know where I put it. I think it's somewhere. I've got... I've got a one has a couple of smart watches hidden. Hey, hey, Paul, easy come, easy go. <laughs> I, know, I mean, I think, I think, I think it was his, like a shit sixties Rolex. I mean, I really, yeah. I don't really think it worked. I think I tried to get yeah. it fixed once, and they, they went fucking take it a Rolex. Yeah. Um, tell me this: the the the, the, the how's the uh, how's the beef going between the two lads? No idea. I mean, I've not keep out of it. Now do with me. Yeah, it, like, I mean, it's it's great. To, obviously, they're fucking having, they're both having phenom, phenomenal, from, from, I can't even fucking speak, phenomenal success by themselves. Experiment success, yes. But would they ever fucking get, you know, if you look at Guns N' Roses, for example, like the, the beef yeah. that they had for years, and uh, yeah, now they Yeah, but it wasn't brothers, were they? True, yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if you look at it, look at it, look at the Kinks, Ray and Dave, now they didn't speak for 30 years or something. And I, I and there's a there's a pub near me called well, it's in Highgate called the Prince of Wales. And I used to go yeah. in the odd time on a I don't know, a weekday. And um, Ray Davis would be at the bar flicking a, a newspaper, and he'd look at me and go, "You sorted out your fucking brothers yet?" <laughs> I'd say, "I'll sort my brothers out when you sort your brother out." And then he'd go back to reading his paper, and you never see him again. But now now he's a sir, kind of make an appointment, isn't he? Sir Ray? What's and you say, all right, sir, right? No, no, I don't, 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 don't bother with him. I bother with Dave now. See, I didn't see Dave for 20 years. Then he yeah. appeared. And you see him walking down the street with his Crocs on. Yeah. Space cadet. And I go, all right, Dave. Oh, all right, mate. Hey, hey, hey. But apparently now Dave lives in Ray's house. In really? Ray. So they've gone full circle. They've gone from hating each other to living in different countries <laughs> to now living together. I mean, I'm circle, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you know, family. Yeah, look, yeah but sure. Fucking, who who knows, mate? You know, who, it's uh, things work out in their own time or well, they don't. Uh, yeah. Did you, did you ever meet uh, David Gilmore or Roger Waters in your time? No, nah, I'm not really into Floyd. I think the, the the most, the best, the nicest guy I've met ever was Joe Strummer. Yeah, I heard he was a fucking legend. Uh, oh. Tom Morello obviously speaks very highly of, of him as well. I mean, I met a few. I met, I met Ronnie Wood and all them, but I mean, the nice, the nicest, 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 coolest, that worth guy was Joe Strummer. And uh, we, we 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 had a we hung out for a year, and then he died. But then, um, then a couple of years ago, I was minding my own business, and some fella rang me from Barcelona. He says, oh, "I need your address." I says, "What for?" He says, "You're in a Joe Strummer documentary." I went, "Yeah." No way. Yeah, I think it was when we sat around a campfire in '98 or something in Glastonbury. Someone made a documentary. It's, it's like Joe's lost Mustang car in Spain. And I remember, yeah. I remember doing a Spanish interview with him, but I couldn't even speak. I can only say paella. I was really yeah. terrible, but I was. Paella, por favor. Um, I, I, I don't think I got to the por favor. I just said paella, mate. There's a couple of people on, on Twitter who uh, have some questions if, you, if you'd want to take. Uh, Paul Leonard asks, ask him about the session in Charlestown. And he, wait, which one? <laughs> Oh, which one? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Um, and then some other lad. Why are Irish TV actors so often not on Twitter? That was from me, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. How, how are we going to answer that one? Um, Fuck Twitter. 
Uh, John Kennedy asks Bebo, he says, why were you not in Oasis? Even if you couldn't play an instrument, you could have been the Oasis version of Bez. Yeah, I, I, I could have been Cressa. Cressa. They want to follow him dancing around. Or it could have been like Leroy in the Proj. No. I mean, listen, we're not the fucking Osmonds, are we? No. Did um, did you ever, uh, did, you, did, uh, did you play anything yourself? No. What for? And did, did you ever have the, the inkling to pick up an instrument? I picked up a guitar when I was six. And then I yeah. give it to, give it to Noel. So <laughs> there you go. And when, did, when did he start playing? What age yeah. was he when he... When, when I gave him the guitar, so maybe five or seven, six or seven. So he was playing since he was since he was a really small lad. Yeah, just noodling in his room. Yeah, on his own. Goes to show, like if you uh, if you stick, you know, if you, if you give give kids uh, an instrument at an early age, they have the. It's like it's like if if you've got a kid into boxing at an early age, they yeah. don't think about when they get they don't have that fear or skateboarding or whatever. Like they they'll always have, it's just like second nature. But when it, like because I was a bit late to the game, I was seventeen and. Swinford, there was a lot of fucking naysayers and like, what are you doing with the guitar? And even other musicians were like, you'd do something that was impressive and you'd been practicing. Yeah, yeah. And then rather than going, fucking hell, man, nice one. It'd be like, you know, like to give you this fucking like yeah, bit of a you, 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 smile. No they knew it was good, but they didn't want to give you the satisfaction of letting you know. Yeah. So it did your confidence no fucking good. Exactly. But then you go down to Foxwood and it's, or, or, or like Culture Mar or other, other towns that were really... Uh, like musically orientated, like Sligo, where you got you're a little bit more, and they'd love you. Yeah, where, 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 yeah, but I think that's the same. Even growing up in Manchester, no one would tell you you were good because then, you know, that's just. And know. Manchester has a lot of a lot of big, like you got the Smiths. Um, oh yeah, I mean, we're, we're all Paddies. Yeah, what? what uh, Happy Mondays. Is Sean Ryder Irish? Uh, well, Gaz Gaz Whelan is the uh, yeah. drummer. I'm not sure about Sean. But no, Gaz is, and then you got the Smiths. You got all of them. You How about Manny uh, and Stone Roses lads? Any of- Manny, Ma- Manny's got some. He's got some cavern in him somewhere. And Lovely. Still there. <laughs> yeah, cavern. Cavern in Kildare. Yeah, you got all the Oasis, obviously. Yeah, he, he, there's there's loads there's loads. We're up, we're up. Manchester was an Irish city. You know? the Mock Turtles. Um, Steve Coogan's brother. Yeah, I don't know him, but I know Steve. Steve, yeah, they got they. I think they're, they're Galway, are they or something? No, they're actually. I think. Uh, I think he's from Partry, which I suppose is on the Galway Mayo border. Yeah, kind of that way. Connemara boys. What, what's uh, <laughs> Lenan out that neck of the woods? No idea. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I tend to stay away from Galway. It's just one of them things when you work with people back in the day, and everyone had done your reading was from fucking Connemara or Galway. You just go. I just put a curse on the place. Fucking not going to Galway. Yeah. We're not playing in Galway. We're not booking. We're not having a session in Galway. We're going nowhere near fucking Galway. Just. Do you reckon oh, you could change your opinion with no, Galway? No. Because the last time, last time I was there, some fellow, but well, he, he wouldn't let me into a rock bar. I mean, it was only like five o'clock in the afternoon. He goes, "You've had too much to drink." I says, "I've not had enough, you prick." Anyway, so that was oh. that. Uh, okay, um, fucking, I uh, mean, mate, Rodney uh, Dulligan from um, from Donegal asks, is the story about Bonehead and the fig rolls true? Uh, probably not. What, what story was that? Oh, I think it was some some fucking bullshit Liam put. I have no idea. I mean, you, you never uh, know about it. But Bonehead's a crazy cat when he gets going. He's, yeah, uh, he, he's, on, he's on best behaviour recently. Oh. He is. Is he, is he off the pints? I think so. And the, la- the last time we had, we had a well, the last time we had a proper session in Dublin, and this was kind of funny. We'd done, uh, I think we'd uh, we'd done. I drafted him into an old after show. I says, "Come on, we're doing an after show in Dublin." I says, "You don't have to DJ. All you got to do is pose for selfies because you're not going to DJ anyway. So you do selfies, and I'll play the tunes." So the next day, he was supposed to go, supposed to get a plane home. And anyway, you know, you start. I'll just have one pint for the road, then two pints, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're getting no plane, and he's thinking he's still stuck in the eighties. I'll just roll up the ferry in five minutes. You're going nowhere. Anyway, some, someone invited us to the Meteor Music Awards in Back Dublin in the day. by that same night. So <laughs> an hour before, I'd put Bonehead to bed. I said, "Listen, go for a lie down, and we'll get you in an hour. I'll hold court somewhere." Anyway, so I get him. I says, come on, we're going. He goes, where are we going? So we're going to a music awards. I've got you on the guest list. Oh, cool. So we turn up. 
And he obviously he's been in bed for an hour. He's been steaming before that. So the, we've got him. The bouncer's gone. He's not coming in. He's had too much to drink. I says he's just woke up. It doesn't look like he's woke up to me. He's not coming in here tonight. I says, Come on, he's bonehead. Bone who? You know the <laughs> bouncers. Anyway, we get him in. Oh, <laughs> And then the next day, he still want him pints. I says, listen, you better go on, mate. Your missus is going to kill you. And he did. He, he, had, he had to get off. But yeah, he, he lost three days of his life in Dublin. Uh, easily done, man. When, when you're on a roll, you're on a roll. You, well, got, you got stuck in the Dublin hole. <laughs> well, when, when pints come flying out of Grogan's with toasties attached to them, it's kind of hard to leave. Yeah, life comes at you fast. Mm. Grogan, toasties. It's a great concept, man. Pints and toasties. They, exactly. They've got it fucking stitched up. Uh, I think what? You're all right until pint five. As soon as you go over into six, you might as well do 12. If you don't leave before five, you're over. Or as my dad would always say, uh, it's funny how you get the taste for it. <laughs> <laughs> the mother's milk. But like we'd be working uh, like on, on like on the site or whatever, and my dad would be like just fucking bounding to get to the pub. And it could be like a Tuesday night. And, and you know, I'd be oh, like, yeah. well, Pints are for the weekend, like yeah, mid uh, What the fuck is wrong with you, son? Uh, you obviously, weren't fucking working hard enough if you don't have the thirst. And I was like, why don't you just have a fucking glass of nice cold water with a bit of fucking cordial or something in it with ice? Uh, it's a different fucking type of thirst, son. And, uh, and now I get him. <laughs> I always felt, felt to understand. My mum's generation, a pint of milk with a dinner. Oh, yeah. My dad would water it down on a Sunday. Yeah. I mean, still, still nowadays, get me a glass of milk. Would you not like a fucking bit? I don't drink. Would you not some water? Glass of milk? No. They weren't excited about a glass of milk. It's probably because they never had it growing up. Yeah. Drink the milk, the bonya, as my dad used to call it. The bonya. The nice thing about my, my uncle, huge or big Mick, he had a he had a dairy farm. So uh, I go I go past with a, a jug just straight into the cooler. You just drink straight out, man. Lovely. We used to do that in McCarrick's. Yeah, you're like this. It's taking you back. My uncle Billy used to have a, a Honda 50. You remember the Honda 50s? The red the one. 50. Well, this is in the 70s. So this before helmets. So you'd have the silk shirt on, opened up, the long hair, big pair of mad flares and high heel boots. And you go, come on, we got to go up to McCarrick's to get some milk. So I'd hold the two side owner, empty side owner bottles on the back of the motorbike. I'll be yeah. up scaring around Ben's. I'll be up there. He's going to Margaret McCarrick. We come for some milk. Or there you go. Fresh from the fucking cow. And they'll be roasting hot. So I have to wear gloves on the way back. Yeah. Whizzing around corners. And there's the milk. That's how we got Jeez. the milk. We, we didn't have any money for milk. We had to go and up on the back, hop on the back of the hand, the 350, and up to the Twinford Barter and kind of stuff. Great. Great. I still remember them days. Yeah. Oh, there was something, there was something magical about Ireland in in, in those. So especially in the summer, when you used to to say, uh, "We're having a day in the bog." Oh, it's fucking! I, I never, I never, never, you know, never. Uh, so they'd be like, twelve like, walking up the road for the day in the bog. We'd be yeah. ham sandwiches and stydona, and then sit there watching old cunts kill themselves, digging peat. And yeah, I never got the appeal of the bog pole, to be honest with you. Like, I mean, dad fucking loves it. He, that was a day out. I mean, we couldn't go to Enniscrone every day. So the day, we'd have these six-week holidays. One day in Enniscrone, one day in the bog, one day in the fields, one day in the town for pension, one day here. And I, t- I tell you, my lot, furthest memory of my first coffee, do you remember camp coffee in the bottle? No, you're too young. Oh, I don't actually. Well, I've, I've, oh, wait, oh yes, wait. Is that the stuff? Is that like the? It had a little map of Ireland on it. Uh, well, this one didn't. I think it had a, an Indian fella. Is it? Is it, made in Glasgow? It wasn't really coffee. It was chicory. Yeah, because there was there was a. I remember that stuff years ago. It, was, it looked like a medicine bottle, and it had a little That's map it. of Ireland on it. Yeah, a tall black thing. But I think yeah. there, was, there was a coffee. I think there was a coffee bean shortage in Brazil. Anyway. Mm-hmm. And uh, poor, poor Paddy used to have to have camp coffee. But was, it was actually quite nice, you know, with, yeah. with hot milk. That was my first espresso kind of thing. Yeah. In, and in, was there any, was there any uh, caffeine in it? I think it might be a little bit, yeah. But it was, it was yeah. a liquid chicory with piping hot milk. There you go, little boy. Sit in the corner and drink. While the big books are drinking the pints, you have the little camp coffee. After well, mass- what, what, is, what is chicory? 
Uh, I think I think it's in there and a liquid extract of kind of cold cold coffee. Ah, yeah, just okay. yeah, camp coffee. Yeah, you see it in bottles. Yeah, because I always wonder what like people would be bringing that back from from Ireland, and uh, I'd be. There's another thing actually I noticed when I was in Mellets uh, a couple uh, two weeks ago. There's there's you know you know the way you take you just see something like the corny rye for years and you're never really taking the heat of it. But there's these there's these beers called Stratton Brower Pills or something. It's in it's in like a black bottle with a yellow label and it's in every pub. But I've never noticed and I've never seen anyone drinking them. But they've G- been there. G- German stuff is it? Stratton. Yeah. Yeah. I've just never seen anyone. Do it. Maybe I might fucking get onto the old Stratton brow when I get back, just to I test think, it out. I think I think it's blonde. Is it blonde German lager? Pilsner, yeah. Yeah, just yeah, probably heavy heavy duty for a book like you, Matt. Oh, fact. Would you would you be much into the into the uh, IPAs or the craft beers as well? No, 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 no. Fuck that. No. no. And my idea of a craft beer is Guinness. Yeah. See, it's like it can be a bit heavy sometimes. Well, yeah, but you're not you're not going to do. I mean, you could probably do about. Depends on a good day. If the good pint, <laughs> twelve about say twelve to fifteen max. Fifteen's coma, but twelve. I mean, yeah. if, if they're flowing, and yeah, it's they, but they got to be real. They got to be pure cream. I mean, they can't be. If I get one bittery taste, that bar is getting fucking slated. Exactly. Yeah, I, mean, I tell you one thing. When it, when I did that gig in Colombia in in Mullingar, there was some there was just. There was some nice pints of Guinness, and every time I'd look down, I'd have two pints in front of me. Exactly. And then I, I, I look, but then I look back again, Paul, and there's no pints. So I'd be like, "What the fuck?" And then I look down again. You've three pints, but, but it was fucking. I've never seen such. It was like it was like musical chairs. It was musical pints with with Fika and the boys. But uh, sorry, there was someone trying to get through on the bad phone. I just had to decline them and then speak to them later and they give me a rollicking. Hey, fuck them to be all right. It's probably fucking Alan, Alan McGee giving you a ring or Bono. Oh, no, fuck Bongo. He, won't be, he don't even know me. Bongo. Bongo. No. I met Bongo once when I was 19. Uh, I was hanging out with a friend of mine called Jay Petrowan, who I haven't seen since I was 19, funny enough. But uh, he was a real cool dude, guitarist, and he's, he's he lives in Bali now and he has his own place out there and he plays music, but he was looking for a gig around Dublin and we were walking through Temple Bar and we were walking up the back of the, the Clarence. So I said, yeah, we'll go in here and see if Bono's in. And we went up the steps. Sure enough, fucking Bono was in there at the lobby. It's a strange, strange bar. Though. It's like old, um, old, kin it? It's like a... I've been in what used to be the kitchen and now it's called the liquor rooms and it was, it was you know, it's grand. It's... um. Not to, not to write home about, but it's not a bad old spot either. But uh, the, the, the upstairs bar, is it, in the hotel? I just don't like the circular bar. I mean, it's just like a circular... I, I, like, I like a long bar. Yeah. Well, you probably like the long hall bar on George Street. No, 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 no. no. I don't like the pints in there. No, no. Oh, really? I think the best pint I've had in Dublin was a place called O'Neill's in uh, Capel Street. That was fairly... It's like a nondescript pub. There's a, it's like a window with a with a uh, bow run in it and a harp and just a load of fucking shite. And then, but you go in and there's like a little bar. It's nice, good pints. I tell you one thing, actually, Uncle Eugene, he he speaks very very fondly uh, the the Celt and Talbot Street and the loveliest pint you'll have is the Celt. And I tell you, I was hanging out with the the Irish tenors and and those boys can sing. Fuck me. <laughs> Yeah, well, they, they 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 need to go and get um, a new bar in Malahide because some of the worst Guinness I've had in Dublin has been in Malahide. Shit, Malahide, yeah, yeah, rubbish. I mean, and I, I know there's a lot of posh people up there, but even so, yeah, pints are not, sure pints not good up there. They wouldn't know a good pint half of those lads because they'd be off drinking fancy wines in Algarve oh. in the south of France. Fucking fancy wines. I think, I think the best pints in Ireland are in the west. Oh yeah, the worst um, pints. Worst worst pints are in, in Belfast. Definitely, definitely. I, I know, I know it's kegged in Belfast. Maybe that's got something to do with it. You need to stay away from it. That's what I was told. It was kegged in Belfast. Maybe them books want to stay away from it. The kegs. They were telling you fucking lies, Paul. They were telling you pure lies. Uh, what, what do you What do you think of Sweden? You've been over here a good few times. Like Twenty pound for a coffee and a bun. <laughs> I was like, eh? <laughs> oh, that's fucking shocking, man. I mean, what was it? What was it? 
pint, a pint's dear enough. It's a tenner or something. Depends on where you go. You can go to the you can go to the cheap bars uh, and you can get a pint for about three fifty, but it's piss water and you will end up with a hangover from hell the next day. I haven't drank since May the second. I think I've had one pint since since our uh, three days. Oh mate, I, I mean even you know you know the the Glasgow fella trainer, the big fella. Yeah, he's not drank since. No, if he got if he gets poisoned, I don't I don't know what they put in over the, the over in <sighs> that part of Spain, but. It's yeah. serious. And what, he's on the Guinness. Uh, well, I was drinking car bombs. I mean, I think I call them car oh. bombs. It was, it is, I was having half a Guinness and a shot of port. I mean, it was a good idea at the time. I mean, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to do it in a pint, but I took it to another level and did it in the halves. And uh, yeah, no, I was grand, but then the next day I was dead. There's a lad here on the the Discord group who asked a question. He goes, um, he goes, this would be a good topic if he has any crack from it. Uh, Good podcast, by the way. Looking forward to it. Uh, it, it basically, about uh, when Liam met Maradona, and did you meet Maradona as well? And what no, are your thoughts on Maradona? I wasn't there because um, I, I, I I didn't tour with Oasis. I used to just do after shows for later later in the thing. It's too, too expensive to tour with them, and yeah. they wasn't even, they wasn't even making money at that time. You know, they would yeah. they do a hundred a hundred gigs a year just to just to make cash. People is, uh, wrongly assume just because you sell a few records in the nineties that you're Ultimately, you're rich. Yeah. You might you don't get to tour. So, uh, no, I never met Maradona. Um, no idea. Fair enough. But he, he like he, he's a great fan of the uh, waffle dust. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, him. He was one of the most famous footballers in the world. And if you get in with the Italians, the or the the, the, bro, the brothers in in the Naples, they make sure you get what you want. You want ah, girls, yeah. you get girls. You want drugs, you get drugs. But he would he would have been in the the Berlusconi uh, bunga bunga parties I'd say with Balotelli and the boys, <laughs> Balotelli and George Clooney. That's in the north. That's in Milan. That's a, that's a, that's another. Sh- uh, well, who was your most disappointing encounter from from the from the world of music or film? I remember I met uh, what's his face James Bond Daniel Craig. Yeah, from Chester, and, isn't he? Uh, well, he's a Liverpool fan, which. Uh, <laughs> Which, which, yeah. which you like, you like, you like think, him even more. No, I think it was uh, the Roundhouse. Oasis played the Roundhouse, one of the last gigs, I think, two thousand and nine. And I just I, listen. If a superhero is going to turn up to an Oasis gig in a navy blue sling, you're going to get it. And I don't give a fuck who you are. So uh, I think I just, I just said, to, I just said to him, I said, "You're a shit, you're a shit action man in your blue sling," and he gave me this steel-eyed stare. As if to say, with his blue peepers, you want to fuck off, mate. So then, three hours later, Noel had come by and he'd gone, All right, Daniel, have you met my older brother? And the fucking eyes were going, I want to kill him. Yeah, kind of shit. I was like, Whatever, mate. Shit superhero. Do one. Funny, on Paddy's day, when uh, we met Christopher Eccleston, and uh, I was trying to ask him about his time in 28 Days Later, and you were like, nah, fuck, Hey, fuck 28 Days Later. What about him? He's a fucking mank. And he's like, all right, and you go best best midfielder of all time, and he goes Paul Scholes, and you're like fuck off, and then yeah, you I... grab him by his lapels and go, and you like made out you're going to headbutt him. But uh, I asked him to be on the podcast. The fucker didn't even get back to me. So if you see him around, tell him I'll slap his jaw asunder. No, he's uh, he's a United fan. He's Chris Eccleston. So sorry. I mean, come on. If you're going to set up my local locking centre, you're going to get shit. Yeah, I don't care who you are. The, the beef is strong. Yeah, big lanky bollocks. He's all right. Doctor Who. Yeah. Doctor, who are you? So, uh, speaking of which, when's that um, show in, in LA with, with uh, Liam and, and the Who? I think we're doing, uh, we've got seven shows on the on, on the, on the Seven? We're on the hell. West Coast show. We've got, we got a few, two or three Hollywood Bowls. And, uh, when are you doing them? October. Ooh, I might have to fucking come out and meet you. What are you? Do- How are you gonna afford a flight out there from back home? Yeah, good question. That ain't gonna happen <laughs> unless the podcast takes off and there's lads going fucking coin. Wait for the European arenas, and we'll have a, a night in Stock. I think we'll be in Stockholm in February. Yeah, an exit, isn't it? Um, not sure. I might, I, I might send some of the crazy gang over to you. Yeah, should do, man. Are you coming over as well? Are you? I'll be on there. I'll be on there somewhere. Some, some, so, can we just hold it a minute? I've got to answer the door. Yeah, it's no in, worries, mate. No worries. Clothes. It's my new attire. Oh, it's a new, new Stowell Island. Uh, well, it's not that. No, can't afford that these days. I've got enough. Hey, uh, Paul. 
Yeah. What was uh, how come how come um, Liam was hanging out with Harry Styles there on Paddy's Day? Uh, because they were in the same studio. Ah, right. Liam was rec- was doing some recording, and he was in the next studio. And this 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 is this is another funny story. So I think they got talking about fish, like you do, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and how Liam was in the sea bass. Yeah, so, you he know, fish, does he? No, he, no, he just like sea bass. So they must have got so they, so they got dumb and dumber. <laughs> yeah. So they, they they got they got talking. Then Harry Styles turns up with a bag of fish, like <laughs> three big sides of smoked salmon and a three mackerel with the heads on. And he gives it to Liam, and Liam's like, "Fucking hell, you give me loads of fish for you, can't? I've got to take them home." So he puts them in the fridge. So I meet him the next day. He's like, uh, "Do you like fish?" I'm like, "Yeah, cool. I love fish." He goes, "Do you want some fish?" I went, let's have a look at it. So I went out of his house and there's fucking massive sides of smoked salmon, like 50, 60 pounds worth each. Yeah. He's like, just take a lot. I went, kill cool. In the backpack home. Fucking great crap. So when I'd seen Harry Styles that day, I went, all right, cheers for the fish. And he went, huh? And I was like, whatever, I'm not explaining to you. Here's a pint of Guinness, cheers for the fish. See you later. I went out the door. He's like, what the fuck are you about? He didn't know. I, I ended up with the fish. How how come, how come Liam didn't have the fish? You think he would have kept one darn of salmon for himself? No, nice. he said he said it freaked him out. What the the salmon or the or the fact that Harry Styles had given them a bag of fish? Uh, I, I, I mean, I'd have stuck it in the freezer, but he's like, it's stinking me fridge out. I went put it in the freezer then. He went, no, no, no. was it smoked? Was it? Yeah. What Pro- was the? F- yeah, it's grand man. It's been it's been cured. Proper, yeah. Two two. Yeah. Men. Straight in the freezer, the mackerel. I, I, I wasn't too keen on the mackerel with the face. I mean, we, yeah, were they smoked though? Uh, I think they were smoked. Yeah, they they went in the oven, head, head off. Yeah, had to be done. <laughs> had to be done. For, you you're gonna give me a three hundred and fifty pound worth of fish? I ain't fucking. I ain't giving it to the dog. That's coming to me. You're dead right. Where, I wonder where Styles got them from then. Oh, he got them from a, a, a deli in Saint John's Wood. And they probably just went, "Hey, Harry." Have that, probably giving it for free. Probably, and then he gave them to Liam. And, and listen, he ended up in my fucking belly. I give it shit. I love smoked salmon. Cream cheese, bit of lemon, bit of chive. No, I've got to stay away from the bread and the uh, the cheese and the lemon. But no, I just, I just, I, I'd eat a whole, I'd eat salmon tomorrow. There's a nice little recipe you can get smoked salmon lasagna with broccoli. Ooh. Nice. Do, do, you, get, do you get fish over there in Stockholm? They're big into um, herring over here. But the thing is, a lot of these, a lot of the herring they have, because they reckon the Baltic Sea is so polluted that they're fucking full of mercury and weird shit. So, because they're very fatty fish, that they retain the the pollutants. So you got to be careful with the ones you eat. But over here, like you have, have you ever eaten sill when you're in Sweden? No, it's pickled herring, but you have it in different. There's ways of eating it. Like when you when you first eat it, you're like, what the fuck is this? But it's an, like everything else. So they, they have sweets over here, right? that look like, you're like, oh, yeah, lovely, a cola bottle. It's got the sugar on it. Or, you know, those pink and blue bottles you get, the sweets. Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, lovely, one of them raspberry flavor or bubblegum flavor, lads. And then you ha- you put it in your mouth then, and it's salt. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the kind of shit you're dealing with over here. Sweet. Yeah, well. I figured out the best way of eating this this uh, sill. Usually they serve it with boiled eggs, uh, sour cream, some uh, chives, a bit, bit of lemon. On hard bread, like rivita. Yeah, them, them scouting, I mean, they're all a bit, you know, suspect, aren't they? I mean, remember they must were whale hunting. I remember we, we went to Norway, Bergen. Yeah. Norway. And just for the novelty, we got fish and chips. Fish and chips in Bergen is 50 euro. Fuck off. So just they, the fish and chips. They steal all the fish off the jocks, off the Scottish, and then charge you 50 quid for fish and chips and £10 a pint of lager. Oh, Jesus. Eh? But they, don't, they don't need your money because they got all the oil. Yeah, exactly. Pay you fifty euros and get the fuck out of my country. That's basically what they tell you to do. So, yeah, no way. Well, here's, a, here's a funny one for you. Uh, you know my brother-in-law, Mike. Mike, yeah. you know Mike. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike. He, he did a music video for this Icelandic band called Nylon, and um, Tony and Chris Griffith wrote the song. Uh, the Reelies. And, sorry. The Reelies. Brutal, brutal, another ale. So they were all over there in Iceland, and apparently they had free, the, a free bar. So uh, Mike was like, 
Oh, mate, I'll get the next round in. So when he went up, the 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 bar had ceased being a free bar. So he goes, gets like around 15 pints in and he goes, uh, yeah, that'll be 350 quid. And he had to fucking get them in. He was like, oh, mate, it was fucking sickened. Sickened. 350 quid for a round of drinks, man. The best value for money in, around in the European is Germany. Germany has some decent beer. And it, if you go to you know, the off-license to get them, I think it's a litre of Bex for like 80 cents. Lithuania in Vilnius back in 2005. I was over there with uh, Tord off and a few of the lads. And we went into this place called Chula Pizza. And this place, they they served they served beer and a pizza and ice cream for six euro for everything. Prague was like that. Prague, I, had, I think I had my 40th in Prague uh, deliberately Tuesday to Friday because you got to get out before the stag dudes turn up. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like 45 pence a pint. When, fucking hell, man. Well, it's about 40, so 13, 13 years ago. Yeah, it's said 45 ping, and then and it was snowing, like minus fucking 20. Speaking of Germany, myself, uh, Pete, Peter Cassidy and Tom Kagallan, the French toast and the boo, about before the Hardy Bucks kicked off, we were in, um, we were we were living here in Stockholm and we were training MMA, like to, to the point where like we would, we were doing a full, a full hour of a class and then afterwards we'd spar each other for another hour in, in the boxing ring. And it was it was the fittest I'd, I'd ever been at, at, for years after, and we ended up going to Berlin. I don't know why we went for nine days, but we decided to check into this Sunflower Hostel and go to Berlin for nine days. And like we were absolute fucking beasts going there. If you could see the before and after pictures from those nine days, I'd like doubled in size and knocked the MMA on the head for about four years after that. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. There is something about mainland Europe that's it's more sensible. I mean, you can sit outside a bar in, say, Dusseldorf. There's 250 bars in a square kilometre. If you want to have a party, you should go to Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf is amazing. You, yeah. You don't, you don't get pints. Leave the pints for the dickheads. Leave the pints for the English. You get yeah. laughs, and you'll always get a girl coming out with a tray of 20 of them at a time. Yeah. And it's just super. Now, I was told a secret about this years and years ago in, in uh, Belgium why you should only drink halves of lager. I mean, it might not be hard or big, but it says you're getting fresh beer. By the time you finish that half, yeah, you've drank Interesting. fresh beer. So the other half is dead. So you're paying for dead beer. So in, in in places where they're civilized in Belgium and in Germany and the Czechs, they know what they're doing. So you bring the people bring them out in trays and trays and trays. And you'll always remain sober when you're not trying to skull pints that's very interesting. Interesting, no, I, I, yeah. interesting story there, if you Martin. Hey, every day's a school day, Paul. Every day's a school day, mate. Yeah. So ha- halves are where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell. Hey, but I, I, we were, I think we were always from the school of you don't do things in half measures. <laughs> However, that doesn't apply to Guinness in the West of Ireland because it's if you get a half a Guinness, you'll get what are you doing? Are you are you gay? It only applies to um, to mainland Europe. It doesn't apply to the West of Ireland. You gotta have a pint, a pint of Guinness. You can't have a. I mean, I've, I've drank a couple of halves and been looked at and going, "Where are you going with that half? Are you gay?" It's like, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> Do you remember the crack poll where, um, like back in the nineties, it was uh, Guinness and black currant? Uh, no, I didn't know. You get, you have a no. That's for girls, isn't it? Oh, yeah, actually, it was my sister who was drinking them. So yeah, fair enough. It's like a top, and what's the fucking yeah. point? I just get a glass of lemonade. Yeah, a lager top. Fucking, what's the point of that? It wouldn't even touch the sides. I mean, that, that's what my dad used to drink. Get, get me a lager shandy. Why? But it would be like three quarters lager. Exactly. And people who drink non-alcoholic beer. Why? Uh, yeah, I don't get that. I can understand that maybe if if you're like in in re- secretly in recovery or something, and you don't yeah. want people giving you shite about it. You're paying the same price for fucking something that's got nothing in it, apart from the. Is chemicals. it the same price? Yeah, near enough. Fucking hell, man. Yeah, that that. I mean, and and even the the price of beer, man, for what it is, that's like tax ingredients and man hours aside, just fucking water and yeast with grains. I mean, it's six. What is it in London? It's, it's between five and six pound a pint. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Scandalous, boys. Scandalous. Yeah. Well, even here, here in Sweden as well, Paul, you go into some places like these fancy uh, craft beer bars, tenner for a pint. 
No, there's, there's, and it's not even a full pint. It's four four hundred mils. No, I, I, I'm not. I mean, we're on when we go on tour. You look in the dressing rooms. Drew has craft beers. Yeah. IPA. I'm like, get that shit out of there. Where, where's the fucking Guinness? And they come in with Guinness in cans, and then I don't drink that either. So just don't drink. What do you think of Coldplay, Paul? Uh, no, not really. I mean. <laughs> they, they look like the man made the clothes, and I don't know. I mean, it's music for the masses, isn't it? Mumford and Sons. Yeah, Mumford and Sons. It's like a farming advert. It's funny, if you look at the fans, Mumford and Sons fans, it's usually like attractive women. I mean, I don't know, they're, they're not on my radar. I mean, the best, the best band I heard in the last couple of years were from Australia called Gangs of Youths. Great name. Gang of Youths, yeah, they're brilliant. They're from... Uh, well, Melbourne. Australia. Yeah. There's, uh, what about the D- DMAs? Is it DMAs? Yeah, no, I don't like them. I think I think one of, one of their dads is a scouser. Not yeah. against scousers, but if you're going to yeah. live in Australia, mate, you better be from like Tasmania or somewhere. But but you, you, oh, Tasmania, right, mate? But you can tell that they, they've you know there's a there's a real resurgence of like in the '90s there was a lot of um, you know harking back to the '70s style. Nowadays you've got lads wearing gear that you wouldn't wear now shell suits and you'd be like fuck that man what are you wearing that for I, I was wearing that shit when I was 12 and, and I was like it's trendy to wear fucking shit that looked crap back then I know and now it's big cash big money oh yeah I wish me ma hadn't thrown out all my fucking stuff from when I was a teenager because I could have I could have hawked that man look like a teddy bunny teddy bunny guy in his house eh? oh hey mate teddy and buddy grant were you a brookie fan back in the day Paul were you yeah 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 now you see, oh, you see, you see, that's where you, that was all that was on telly there was always fit birds in Brookside. Yeah, Anna Friel and... Uh... I, knew, I, know, I know Anna, I knew, I knew the other one, uh, Rachel Lindsay. She played Sammy Rogers. Sammy Rogers? The, the Rogers family. I think I think my my, 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 my gay AirPods are going to die, so I'm going to have to pause to re, to get another pair of headphones, so you're going to have to uh, bear with me there, Marty. No worries, mate, no worries. Because I'm, I'm on one ear already. I, I need to go and get me different headphones. I'll be, I'll be back. Yeah, no worries, mate, no worries. AirPods! Great idea, shit battery. <laughs>